Hello and welcome to Infinity. Let's have do a few things with the color blend mode. Start off by getting all the benefits of brightening up the picture without the disk benefits of it being burnt out in the lighter areas. So for that we want a mask which is going to say pull the emphasis onto the dark areas and we can do that by hovering over the picture here, hit control alt and clicking on that. And what this is doing here is selecting by lightness, in other words, luminosity selection. Now then, if I do something like, if I go down here to curves, and I'm just using this effectively to create a second layer and then duplicate and, and blend back but by it, so I don't need to change the curves itself. Then what I've done immediately is I picked up the selection as a mask here, so I alt click that. You can see there it's got black and white in that mask there, as you can see a bit of there. I can hit Control D, by the way, to get rid of the marching ants, which I don't need anymore. Now then, go back to this, and I just change my blend mode now to color dodge, and here you get the standard color dodge effect, where midtones are brightened, but the highlights are pretty burnt. But all I do is just invert this mask. So if I hit Control I, now the sky comes back but the effect is brought down here. I can still, by the way, use the opacity and turn it down to the effect that's, you know, reasonable. And that's good enough, so I've got this mid-tone brightening without that loss of sky. So what else can I do? So with this one, I've got a picture. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do the hit Control J to duplicate it, a Control I to invert it, and which is fairly common with this, and then hit Color Dodge. And the first things I note here is there's some areas here which are sort of like sticking out, and there's some little bits elsewhere. And this can be an indicator of problem. It's kind of useful to go, what's going on down here? I'm actually going to delete that, and just drag the pipette from up out here to look at the RGB. What immediately I see here is red is zero there, which is one reason why the, the blue is so dominant on that. It really does stand out. Those gloves are the same there. So if I do the same over here, again I've got red almost zero here. So you could do some work to boost that. Just a quick way of doing this for the down here. If I go to the adjustments to vibrance, and I'll just turn that down the vibrance there. And what you get then is, is this sort of darkens off and it becomes less dominant within the picture. I'm going to merge that in because I don't need to change that again. And to play around with things in the shadows, the way to do that is to go to the develop persona. And if you've got these things clicked on up here, then you can see it's going to flag that there's a problem there. And a way to address that is simply to reduce the black point in this case. There we go. So I develop again to come back again. So now I hit Control J and Control I to invert, and then go to the color dodge. Then those are not standing out so much there, so they're not going to stick out a lot. Now then, what I'm going to do here is I've, I've, because I've got two layers. If I've got the Move tool selected here, if I drag it around, I get sort of like an echo here. But all I want to do is move it a tiny bit, so I can just use the arrow keys. So if I go down and then right, down and right, down and right, down and right, down and right, what you end up with is a, an emboss. So there's an embossed picture. It looks like it's cut out, cuts out because things are pressed in here. And this one reason for this is we think the light is up here, so the shadow is down this way. So we can just drag it back up to snap to this. Make sure you've got the snapping set there and then go up and right, up and right, up and right, up and right, and now it seems to be proud. Another thing we can do with this from here is, in fact, actually more normally, is go to the light filters and go to the Gaussian blur. And then if I turn up this, then you can get the lines appearing like this. So it's a way of, of getting edges. And now I can do something like well, I'm just going to hit Control J on the bottom layer there, because I want another one of these, because this other one, middle one here, is part of this 
effect where you click and shift click there to make a group. Hit Control G for that. Now I can put another blend mode on. And if I go to the blend modes here and go down to the darker ones, all the white disappears. And I can fit one in, uh, in here. Multiply is often a pretty good one. And you're going to get a sharpening effect. Let's go into this to see what it's like. So get before and after. See before and after. And I can also go back into here, find that Gaussian blur, and I can play with that, and that will change that effect. So you can get that. It actually increases the contrast around the edges with which have appeared there. So it's a kind of sharpening effect. So there we go. Lots of different ways that you can use the um, color dodge blend mode. Thank you very much for watching.